Okay, so let's start prototyping webinar. <clears throat> I'm Puria. You'll find me under a PNA or Puria username on any social if you want. Um, part of the Dynarc team. Um, so <clears throat> why we're talking about prototyping? Because in building products is one of the first, I mean, <clears throat> whether you are a um, startup guy hipster or an old um, making things uh, engineer and uh, waterfall, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> in any case, uh, in product development, one of the first thing that comes after the inception and, uh, and and the idea concept uh, and stuff, when you want to start to build something uh, for real, the first thing that you want to do is to prototype something. Okay, and I have proofs with nice infographics that I uh, get from the web internet. And uh, so the startup guy <coughs> will follow the design thinking, lean startup, agile and uh, and uh, a lot of fancy buzzwords. Here, after the emphasize ideate, ideate between the abstract and, um, <laughs> and real sort of things, uh, uh, so the first step uh, is to prototype something, okay? Then you reiterate here with, uh, with the testing and, uh, and rebuilding stuff and, uh, and things like that. Um, in the case of the waterfall guy, is the same. So after you have uh, gathered all the requirements, six month documents and blah, blah, blah. And uh, then before you start to uh, the construction, the manufacturing, uh, in any case, uh, you have a user design part uh, that the first part uh, is um, includes the prototyping part. Um, kind of cool. So uh, what is the goal of this prototyping? Um, sorry for my macaroni English, uh, it's something that I wrote here. Um, verify and communicate the main functions of a product and offer an idea of the information architecture in which the user will interact to achieve uh, his purposes, the goals of the, of the um, um, product you're trying to build. Uh, in the same way, um, for the oldie guy, and that is for uh, digital products, but also for manufacturing, uh, digital prototyping gives conceptual design, engineering, manufacturing, and uh, sorry, uh, sales and marketing department the ability to virtually explore a complete product before it's built. So, a lot of people, huh? A lot of stakeholders, design, engineering, manufacturing, sales, marketing department. So it means it gives an idea of the, of the fu fully working product to a lot of people. But the most important part, uh, uh, probably, well, let's see, uh, you, we also have some kind of, uh, uh, so by simulating and validating the real world performance, um, yeah, here. By simulating and validating the real world performance of product design digitally, manufacturer often can reduce the number of physical prototypes they need to create before a product can be manufacturing, reducing the cost and time needed for physical prototyping. So this is important for industries that they want to reduce uh, the most amount of time and work to be done. But I think that this part is key. Digital prototyping changes the traditional product development cycle from design, build, test, fix, to design, analyze, test, and build. So build goes to the latest stage. So this is important because you have the time to, to make um, assumption, validate it, uh, doing stuff, uh, refine your ideas, and you just build at the end stage in place of building before uh, to discover that something is not right and then uh, uh, fix it afterwards with a lot of uh, rework done. So, um, um, this is a nice quote. Uh, if a picture is worth 1,000 words, a prototype is worth 1,000 meetings. 
and this is uh, real. I mean, <clears throat> uh, it gives you um, it downs a lot the uh, communication barrier between uh, different actors. Okay, so you really uh, helps you to understand each other on on the product development cycle. Um, and uh, so what are the benefits of prototyping? Um, so we have a better understanding of the design intent, um, especially also uh, inside the internal team member, uh, people that want to build stuff. Um, so it uh, allows you to um, real understand what uh, maybe the product owner or the uh, or some member of the team want to communicate uh, um, and express uh, by showing things for real so you can touch it and you really understand what are the uh, the design intents of your products um, it gives you a super fast feedback cycle so it means that if someone sees something and it says, no, but this is wrong. I mean, you have uh, uh, not so much uh, reworking time because it's a super easy prototype. So you, uh, you can uh, change it um, as, as you see it, you can give uh, a good feedbacks. Then you validate it uh, super easily before deploy. So if some part of the process of the product is a, a failing point, uh, um, you fix it before, so it uh, validates all the uh, all the behavior and uh, and the features of uh, of your uh, of your product before you're going to release it. And uh, probably very important, also last but not least, allows you to access to user research and user testing. Why? Because um, especially in user testing, uh, uh, if you want to ask for uh, tests and feedback uh, from the users, uh, you want to show them something. And if you don't have a, a prototype or something that simulates your product, uh, um, it's really hard to explain to, to users uh, what you want to achieve and, uh, and if that works and, and, and research for their sentiments or, or feedbacks. So it's, um, um, it's really important to have something to show to them. Um, so yeah, how can you say no? It's um, a super win-win situation. <clears throat> and uh, okay, so let's speak about how to making these prototypes. Uh, I assume that you already have a validated idea or uh, and you want to start to build something or maybe uh, it's not super validated, you didn't do the market validation or blah, blah, blah. But in any case, you uh, know your actors and you made your research on your personas and uh, the journey map and uh, user journey and stuff that are out of the scope of this presentation. But it's uh, the service design part, it's somehow clear to you. Okay, so you need uh, who you want to target the, the product and uh, and build for and uh, you uh, you know what idea you're uh, pursuing to to create your product um, okay so one of the very um, first step uh, suggests that I mean <clears throat> all these things are not uh, rule uh, written on the stone, but are suggested things. Uh, um, so you need to produce a list of needs ordered by priority. Okay, and for each of these items, for each of these needs, you want to um, uh, to indicate the relative function uh, to be designed uh, that uh, satisfy the need. Okay, uh, so one of the most let's say most common tools to, to make these things are scenarios, use cases, storyboards, and uh, user stories that I will uh, focus into um, uh, <clears throat> this tool. So no very better than Wikipedia can explain you user stories. Um, so User stories are uh, an informal, natural language description of one or more feature of a software system, okay? Um, and user stories are 
written from the perspective of an end user or a user of a system, okay? So, so it means that I um, explain what a user needs from uh, the point of view of the um, user of the, of the product. Uh, and uh, uh, I explain all the features uh, that a user needs. Okay. Um, yeah. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Uh, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um, the templates uh, of, of the user stories uh, is as uh, the follow, as a role, uh, I can. Uh, doing something so that uh, I have uh, uh, something back in return uh, benefits, okay? Or uh, in order to uh, receive return the benefit as a, a blah, 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 I can uh, have a goal or a desire, okay? So, um, <clears throat> No, we don't care. Um, I have some example, maybe. Okay, so um, no. Let me also search. Uh, yeah, the part of comparing with use cases. So user stories are very similar to use cases. Use cases are more general. Uh, it gives you uh, a bigger overview of um, of what is happening and a bigger scenario of, uh, of you, what you want to express. Like for instance, a uh, uh, use case uh, should be, uh, our software is uh, able to manage, um, I don't know, uh, handle uh, um, accounting, okay? So this is very generic. But the user stories are a subsection of these use cases that uh, tells you that if we want, when we have uh, account management, our user are able to achieve this goal in this way, okay? Um, let's go farther. Oh, okay, so here I have some examples of uh, how to write uh, some good uh, user stories. Uh, uh, so here in this case, uh, uh, okay, so here is an example of, I don't know, some, uh, some service uh, for car sharing or something like that. So as a driver, I want to block badly behaved passenger so they are never shown me again, okay? Or as a passenger, I want to link the credit card to my profile so I can pay for a ride faster, easier, and without cash. So these are very good example of user stories that gives you a perfect idea to, um, to different stakeholders what your product can, uh, can achieve, okay? So what are the goals, what, and also helps uh, for designers and developers to understand uh, so if you need uh, that thing to do, I have to uh, architecture or engineering some uh, processes or some part of the software that, or service uh, that do things and uh, stuff in that manner, okay? Um, and uh, they are also key for us for, um, for uh, for the ledger uh, mentors and uh, and people because uh, um, especially it happened also in the in the previous uh, uh, ledger uh, <clears throat> teams that they tried to explain to us that uh, just their solution and not what uh, what they want to really achieve with their uh, product and and allow us. Uh, uh, to understand better, uh, it doesn't come with uh, just trying to uh, put down uh, what you want, uh, what is your solution, uh, and not explaining well uh, what was the problem you're trying to solve and uh, really what, where is the goal you're trying to aim. Um, okay, so once we have the user stories, uh, uh, Oh, so much. Okay, this is uh, okay. 
okay, a lot of fancy ideograms. Um, okay, let's say that this part uh, is um, uh, is the idea person, the service design part. Huh? Uh, and here, this is uh, the branch that you wrote, write, wrote uh, your user stories already. Then uh, you start with the uh, wireframing in low fidelity design, visual design, then high fidelity. And then at the end, the, the final uh, design, uh, the final product design. Uh, so here in the lo-fi, the, there are many tools to make uh, lo-fi designs and, and stuff like that. But for me, uh, one of the most uh, effective one uh, is uh, paper prototyping. Um, paper prototyping is uh, you just uh, sit at the, uh, at the table, uh, in a round table with a lot of people, different kind of... Uh, background of people, different stake stakeholders and uh, uh, designers, engineering, marketing, whatever, business owner and stuff like that. And you start to sketch and uh, you see, I think that if you want to create, uh, to follow these user stories, uh, we want to create uh, um, maybe a page on an app or a website page, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and uh, you start sketching. Why is this important? Because you can have instant feedback. I'm oh, sorry. Um, Sorry for the interruption. I have some uh, leakage in my bathroom. Uh, yeah, okay, again, back to my words. So where, okay, so you have a lot of people around your table and you have, uh, when you sketch, you have instant feedback of, oh no, but I thought that that was not in here, but in there. And you just uh, uh, scratch it out and uh, remake it instantly or Oh, now I understand what you meant by when you're saying that uh, users are able to blah, 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 okay? Um, so this is a huge uh, communicate, I mean, lowering so much the communication barrier between the, uh, between the people uh, seated around them. And even if they have uh, no background about designing or, um, or uh, engineering uh, and our normal people, they can uh, give their feedback with, uh, with ideas and, um, and, uh, and this is um, taking uh, um, a user-centric approach with uh, uh, co-designing and uh, human-centric stuff, okay? Um, so for paper prototyping, this is insane, okay? This is not okay. So much uh, putting in the cardboard uh, or uh, cut things uh, like, uh, for instance, uh, these pieces of things that you replace. It's not really needed. Some good uh, prototype is more like, uh, okay, so this, okay? So you just uh, um, design a bunch of boxes and you, um, put arrows to to express how to interact with each part to each other and how is the flow or the user journey and uh, you have comments in here so this is uh, a, a good example um, let's go okay then we have wireframes um, wireframes is um, uh, actually more uh, about um, content and uh, um, information architecture of your previous uh, uh, paper prototypes. Uh, so in this case, you have um, different, I mean, <clears throat> different opinions of um, how, to, how to achieve your wireframes. I usually use uh, exactly Oh, 
I usually use this kind of, uh, oops, what happened? He decided to end the presentation. Yeah. Uh, Okay, so uh, I usually use uh, this kind of uh, deck cards uh, for wireframing. They, they are super useful and uh, allows you to put uh, your content uh, in an ordered way. Um, so this is just an example, uh, UX kits, but you have uh, plenty of that in the internet. You find it, they're very cheap uh, and uh, allows you to uh, reorder things in an immediate way, okay? Also in this case, uh, very useful for people that are not uh, of, the, of the design or engineering part, but you can interact with them and, uh, and uh, gather good feedbacks and about the usage, the content that you want to put in uh, and, uh, and see the, how much the cognitive, um, <clears throat> how heavy cognitive is, could be a page, uh, or uh, an app page or whatever, and so on. Or uh, you have um, different opinion, people do it by software, by putting, uh, uh, you know, different uh, wireframing kits and, uh, and designing uh, with gray uh, shades, <laughs> the pages. But for me, it's something that uh, it's really, um, I mean, it's very time consuming also, uh, when you have feedbacks that say, no, we cannot put that in place of this, and it takes five minutes to move that from here to th uh, there. But in case of, uh, you know, of, the, of the cards, uh, you just move it uh, around the table and you don't need any uh, instrument or software. So it's really more easier. After that, you go for real uh, mock-ups, hi-fi, high-fidelity um, wireframes uh, in which you also put the UI and uh, you try to, to, to refine your, uh, your design cho cho choices and, uh, and, and see something that, uh, that is really close uh, to a final design and you can show to to normal users, for instance, and, uh, and that's it. And it takes uh, so much time and probably uh, there are uh, UI UX guys that are doing that. And uh, a step forward is GigaFi, so is Giga Fidelity, uh, when you add uh, interactive uh, um, action to your prototypes. Uh, well, actually, you can also do it with paper prototype. I usually do it with uh, after sketching paper prototype. Um, then after I put it on, um, I personally use InVision, but there are different tools that you can use uh, to to achieve that, and uh, and gives you the the sense of the also the different. Uh, uh, paths, the user journey, the user experience, uh, the interaction design. So when I, uh, when I uh, tap here or when I click here, what happens, what section it opens, uh, what is the flow of information that I have uh, uh, from the first point to the uh, end point of my user story. Um, this is something optional, but is really good when you do user testing. Okay, and also to, to make it clear uh, for people that are not uh, uh, into the, uh, in the first place, uh, into the development of the product. And sometimes uh, it helps you to, to validate the flow, uh, the real flow of the things and you say, oh, but uh, okay, so we need to log in here to have the my profile icon. So we need to uh, open a different branch and let people log in, a user log in and stuff like that. So it validates your uh, user journey also. Uh, it's very useful and uh, it takes not so much time. You, you, you get a rectangle and say, when I click here, go to this section and, and so on. It's su super easy, not needed for uh, designers to do that. 
Okay, yeah. Boring question that always people ask me. Uh, what if I just have a service and not a new UI? <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, it's actually the same, okay? So we have seen the wireframing for uh, user interfaces, sure. But uh, same case if you have something in the, in the, in the back end or it's just something that uh, you want to build for machine to machines things, okay? So you start from the user stories um, and, and write uh, who can do what, okay? Uh, you need to know your actors, so who interacts, uh, their machines or uh, I don't know, mm -hmm. there are APIs or whatever, uh, I don't care. You need to define the touch points. Uh, your touch points are uh, when these actors interact uh, with your, oh, where is my pointer? Uh, um, is um, when these actors interact with your product, okay? So those are the, your touch touch points. Uh, in, uh, in digital products, you have different touch points. Sending an email is a, a digital one or going to, to the cashier is a physical one. Okay, it depends by the service. So, uh, in this case, maybe you want to hit a, a, an API or an endpoint or whatever, but you need to um, uh, put them in a list. So. And uh, what are the effects of your service in the real world? So when I hit the, this uh, touch point, what happens? Okay. And at the end of the day, you have to figure out how to show it to your grandma <laughs> and this service uh, and to us because we are stupid, right? Uh, so if we want to really understand uh, what you're trying to achieve, uh, we need to see something that simulates uh, uh, everything uh, in uh, uh, in the design of your product. Uh, okay, this was my intervention. If you have any questions, I'm here. Hi, Puria, this is Teresa from Leave. Hmm? Thank you for the presentation. I have uh, a quick question uh, on prototyping then what I understand is that we don't build anything that has a real functionality behind, but it's, it's more about how to understand the interactions of the users. Yes, it's a mock. It's also, it, uh, yes, yes. It's also, it all especially helps you to, uh, to create the, the real product. Yes. Okay, thanks. And, and you usually want to use the quickest way and the fastest way to make it, okay? Because you really want to, to, to put your effort uh, in the uh, real product part. So the prototyping part should be super easy. If you're quicker to use one tool in place of another, if you want to do it, I don't know, Excel or paper or whatever, whiteboard, the fastest thing, uh, way you, you can do it, that is the right way. That is the right manner. And who will be best to test our prototypes with? Since they're not going to have any functionality, I guess we can just not throw them out to... It, it depends by what kind of service or product you're trying to build. Okay, so if I want to build uh, a product that um, it's for, um, uh, let's say, impaired people, okay? Uh, probably I want to have uh, a doctor of behavioral or uh, psychologist into my team that helps me in some parts. So when you try to explain very difficult uh, 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 projects to this kind of people and they're not part um, into the development every day, okay? So you need this prototype to explain to them uh, what happens and uh, uh, how your product uh, will work. And they understand and says, oh, but for impaired people, maybe you want to do this and this in place of that, okay? But unless they don't see it, uh, they cannot understand it. But this is also, this is a case when you have an external uh, uh, people uh, in the team. But also for internal people that uh, when you want uh, um, to convey 
uh, on uh, some uh, huge uh, design decision and you have uh, uh, strong opinions uh, from the design uh, uh, team and strong opinions from the engineering team that maybe they don't uh, fit together. Uh, you, well, not usually, but happens sometimes, <laughs> a lot of times. So when you prototype, you can fix this kind of, uh, this kind of, um, let's say, um, heavy talking and, uh, and put it down and, 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 and make a good decision for both of the words. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Puri, I have a question. Please. Uh, could you say a couple of words about uh, the planning and uh, the use of time uh, with, uh, well, with prototyping? So if you want to do, well, with, with prototype and design in general. So what are the cycles you should uh, follow? Uh, how do you measure them? So I would, I would like to say a very quick word about sprints. Uh, well, that is um, that is generally um, an afterward phase. It, it's uh, in the building one, and it depends also by which kind of um, development you follow. But uh, uh, let's get to the lean startup agile. Okay, so you have sprint planning here and sprint execution in the very uh, end phase of your uh, of your project so the the very um, early part uh, uh, is the lean part uh, when you uh, in cycle prototype uh, gather feedbacks uh, uh, build something measure and test that the prototype is working and if something is not okay you rebuild it super fastly once you have this thing you you put your user story your validated user stories in the in the product backlog okay and the product owner puts all the user stories in the in the backlog uh, those that are validated and you start to to chunk this uh, this product backlog into a, a fixed amount of time that is called the sprint then uh, in the sprint you execute and uh, do uh, stuff, build things, and uh, and ship uh, and deploy stuff, uh, and uh, you check it. You do the sprint review. If something working is okay, if something is not done done, then you reput it in into the work uh, and you cycle again. Okay, so you chunk all the user stories. So the first thing is to when you prototyping allows you to have. Uh, the list of valid user stories, okay? That is very important because it gives you a very neat view of what the so software or service or the product has to, to achieve. Then this, uh, this chunk of user stories, you put it in production phase, I mean in building phase. So, and then uh, you start to go with the cycle of sprints or uh, any kind of, uh, uh, <clears throat> of other methodology to, to build things. That's it. Yeah, Puria, hello, I'm Roger. Ciao, Roger. Um, school tool, yes. I have a, a question that may be a little bit difficult to, un to, to answer, but are there any K performance indicators that, mm. that you can measure in order to see how well is done your prototype in the Lean Startup methodology? Mm -hmm. That's my uh, question. Are, are there any KPIs? Yes. <laughs> uh, well, I, um, I, I think that, um, uh, I mean, never use that. Um, even in super huge project with a lot of people. Uh, the point is that the product owner, in my opinion, have the sentiment when all, all, all the involved uh, 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 different people understand uh, what uh, what the real product is. So once uh, you you, it's more uh, sentiment uh, to the 
uh, to the product owner, okay? So in that case, if you have a stupid product owner, uh, usually your uh, product uh, um, fails, <laughs> fails faster. That is a good thing. Uh, but anyway, I, 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 I feel that is more on, uh, on feeling that uh, you, you see when, when people have clear ideas uh, of uh, no doubts uh, about anything. And if something is not clear, if you get back to the prototype and and it is defined, then uh, it's uh, it's uh, it means that the working group did well. Um, I can say this. Another way to measure it, uh, uh, probably well, to validate user stories, uh, that is another uh, uh, thing, and that is easy because. If uh, uh, outside people or different uh, uh, users understand uh, what they can gather and achieve with your product, then it means that uh, user stories are okay. Okay. So if you made a small uh, questionnaire after, uh, let them read uh, uh, the user stories and they um, talk to you. I mean, they answer to you in a in a positive way, it means that they understand the product and it means that you did well with your user stories or with your prototype. Okay, thank you, Puria. Thank you. You're welcome.